the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, my beloved, as you know, it's the fourth Sunday of our blessed Pentecost season. And as, as we learned many times, many years, that the Pentecost season is all about God being the life, or Jesus Christ is the life the life based on the truth, no doubt, the life resembled by the bread of life, the water of life. And today, Jesus is presenting himself as the light of life. Today, I want to talk to you about the light. Light actually is a great symbol of many wonderful things. If you look in the Bible, uh, the light was a symbol of God himself, was a symbol of faith, was a symbol of holiness, was the symbol of angels, symbol of Christians. Light is also very much associated with resurrection. That's why every year God, when he wants to bring the joy of resurrection to our heart, we see that through the appearance of light, in his wonderful tomb just to rejoice and announce the resurrection. If I look at God being symbolized by light, the Bible said that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is my light, the light of my salvation. In another place, in the first epistle of John, it said that these then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him no darkness. So light is a very important symbol of God himself. In fact, it's an identification. If we say that about God, the Elohim or the Theo, and then we'll find Jesus today saying, I am the light. It's as if Jesus saying, I am a, I am God. So Jesus then said to them that I am the light. In the book of Matthew, it also said that the people living in darkness have seen a great light. When Jesus was born, it was the darkest night. And the Bible prophesied in the Old Testament and the New Testament that when Jesus was born, it was as if light just shines upon the earth. Uh, what about us? We are considered the children of light. Every midnight praise we start, we tell people, arise, or children of a of light. So if God is light and you guys are the children of light, I don't need uh, intelligence or high IQ to know that through the resurrection we became the children of God. All of these are wonderful things, but what is in it for me? I want to learn a lesson today about light. Firstly, we will focus on three needs for the light. You need light inside you. You need light surrounding you. You need light ahead of you. When it comes to the light inside you, actually, this light is so important so that you can know God in His true existence. You see, the world outside is uh, scrambled, trembling, because the lack of knowledge of God. In one of the wonderful verses in the Bible that says, God will shine upon us through the Son or through Christ to the knowledge of Him. It is unbelievable, my beloved, to listen to the story in the book of Acts today and consider it a 2,000 years old story, yet it is a repeated story every single day. You know, when St. Paul went to Lystra, he approached the people there and they were worshiping idols. As soon as 
he made a miracle or performed the miracle. People looked at him and Barnabas and they said that these are gods. <coughs> these men are considered gods. They even give them titles of gods. And they started to uh, offer a sacrifice. But when Paul said, no guys, listen, I'm not a god. I'm coming to tell you about God. I'm glad that you are thinking that the human can become gods. Yet in reality, the story is the opposite. It is not the human who became God. It's God who became the human. It is as simple as that. Yet when he did that, the same people who were just about to offer him a sacrifice started to stone him. What is that? It is very easy, my beloved, to see that people could easily accept a human being to become gods. Yet, it is impossible to accept the idea that God can become a, a human. That was 2,000 years ago. Honestly speaking, that idea of a human Godhead, uh, it's not just 2,000 years ago, it's more than that. 7,500 years ago, when the devil came to Eve and said, eat of this and you become God. It is easy for a human to accept that. Yet, it is almost impossible to accept that God can become a human. It is unbelievable. But you know what? The lack of that knowledge and the lack of that understanding is because of the lack of the light internally. Jesus once said a lovely thing. He said that nobody could claim that Jesus is the Son of God without the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit in you? The Holy Spirit lives in you now. If I tell two, three years old boy or girl that God loves you and for that he became a human and was crucified, he could easily accept it. Not because he is super smart, better than others. No, it's because of the Holy Spirit who lives in him. That's the internal life or the internal light. When you talk to scientists, those who consider themselves smart, better than all, and you tell them the same, they cannot comprehend it because of the lack of internal A, internal light. The internal light will act to reveal to you the nature of God. Not just his existence, his incarnation, his plans. No, it will reveal to you that God is so loving, so caring. God is wonderful. It will reveal to you that God loves you despite your misery state. It will reveal to you that if God doesn't do the miracle that you are praying for, it's not an indication of abandon. No, it's still God loves you. Because honestly speaking, those who have the internal light, they don't link their faith to miracles. Look at Jesus today. The Bible says, although he did many miracles, they did not believe. Because we cannot base our faith on miracles. We base the faith on our internal realization of God's love and care. Internal light, my beloved, will reveal to you who God is. An internal light will help you to understand your true value. Will help you to appreciate your self-worth. Will help you to dissociate between what value you are, of what material you think you are, of what rank you are. Dissociate that from what degree you have, from how much money you have, from how many followers on Facebook you have from how many believers in your ideas you have, from, from what exactly, fu what function you do in the church. <laughs> if you can really dissociate your true value from all of these based on eternal light that reveals to you that you are so valuable despite being poor or rich, at this moment, you will be super content and super happy. And that's another thing about light. Light is indication of happiness. Those of you who know psychology, they will know that people who go through depression, 
in anxiety, panic, they all have one thing common. They will tell you that there is a dark spot in the heart. That dark spot is like the dark hole that sucks everything. We need to put some light internally, my beloved, so that we can be happy. That's the first lesson of today. Second lesson, you need to have a light surrounding you. Internally, you can do that in your private room. You can read the Bible, you can pray, you can scream, you can cry, you can seek, you can... But with that, you need a light surrounding you because you are not living alone in the world. You are dealing with people. So you need to know how to distinguish between people. You need to know not how to distinguish based on all what we said. No. You need to know that every single human being is created in the image and likeness of God. So when you deal with him, you are dealing with God. Yet at the same time, you need to place people where they deserve, where, where they belong, so that you do not cause any conflict. You need to set certain boundaries. You wouldn't know how to set those boundaries unless you have the light surrounding you. And in that, I think the lesson of resurrection is the best lesson. It's amazing. You see, uh, St. Paul said that when I died with Christ and resurrected with him, I shall no longer live myself, but Jesus Christ lives in me. Many times we say that we need to take Jesus as a model and follow. I want to have a light to see people and know exactly how can I align my acts based on not only myself, but based on the receiver. I need to know that. You know, I will only know that from the light of the Bible. Uh, the Bible today tells us that people sometimes could become moody, like those people in Lystra. At one point, they wanted to worship St. Paul, put him in a high pedestal. But when he said, guys, I don't want the glory to myself, I want the glory to God, they couldn't comprehend it. So they stoned him. If Paul listened to Jesus' story, he would know that uh, sometimes when we speak the truth, we get hurt. It's amazing, my beloved, to see one verse today in today's reading, reading. It said that when Jesus said so, he decided to leave them and go somewhere else. St. John Chrysostom, I was reading something this morning. He said a lovely thing. He said that we've seen Jesus escaping the multitude when they wanted to stone him. We saw him escaping the multitude when they wanted to throw him off the mountain. Today we see Jesus leaving the multitude without anybody taking any action. But John Chrysostom said, let me tell you that Jesus knew what is in their heart. So he decided to escape so that they don't fall in sin because of him. One day, there was some people who went to torture and kill the monks. At that time, uh, St. John the Short used to live in the area. So when the people came to torture the monks, John Chrysostom decided to escape. And many people went to him after that and said, Father, how did you do that? We know that you are so righteous, so holy. How did you become scared and afraid? To the point that you escaped martyrdom. And he told them, I did not escape martyrdom because I was afraid. I did not want somebody to kill me. So I take the crown of martyrdom and he is thrown in, a, in hell. What is that? This is a great light in dealing with others. One day, there was a man who was blind. And he was hold, holding a stick to walk on the streets. Then all of a sudden, people found him leaving the stick and holding a lamp and walking in the streets. 
So people started to mock him and said, how come you are a blind man and you are holding a lamp and walking in the street with the, with the lamp? What does it do to you? Does it really help you to see your way? So he said to them, this lamp is not for me. It's for those who consider themselves not blind because they keep hitting me unnecessarily. This lamp is not for me. I am holding the lamp so people can see me and they stop hitting me. Sometimes in dealing with others, we need to hold the lamp of Christ. We need to hold, to hold his behavior in dealing with others so that we can recognize that we are truly the sons of light. Uh, in short, my beloved, the other light that we need ahead of us is the light that will lead us to eternity. We need that light. We need to know exactly what we can do to reach that eternal life. What exactly we are doing for that. Why we are doing the things we are doing. We need to start to value every single action, every single word, every single comment, every single message, every single post, every single thought. And we filter that from the filter of eternity. Because that's the supreme light. In heavenly Jerusalem, God said that there, there is no darkness at all. Because God himself will become its light. In summary, my beloved, light is a symbol of life. Darkness is a symbol of death. Light is associated with truth. Darkness is associated with lies. Light is associated with joy. Darkness associated with sadness. Light is always a symbol of existence. When Einstein was asked to define what is light, he said that it's the, what is darkness? He said it's the absence of a of light. Light is the symbol of goodness. Light is the symbol of knowledge. Finally, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.